What is the Swiss cheese defense? Imagine a slice of cheese and it has the cheese, which is the defense and the holes in the cheese, which are the holes in the defense. Now, imagine that an aggressor is trying to go through. Well, where there is cheese, the aggressor cannot go through. But obviously, through the holes, it can. Well, if you only have one layer of defense, the aggressor is going to go through the holes. But if you have a second layer, that second layer is going to stop some more of the aggressor, especially where there is cheese in one layer and there's no cheese in the other layer, right? In some cases, the holes are going to be aligned and so the aggressor is going to go through. So the more layers you add, the more of the aggressor you're going to stop. And at the end, if you have enough layers of cheese, enough slices, all of the aggressor is going to be covered because there's enough cheese throughout the entire layers to stop everything. Obviously, for us, the equivalence is the four layers of defense against the coronavirus. One, the fences stop cases come from coming in. Two, social bubbles. When they come in, don't meet with other people. Three, a contrafection, which is reduced contagiousness. When people do meet, prevent them from infecting others. And fourth, tra test, trace, isolate. When they do infect others, identify them and neutralize them. So these are the four layers of defense in the Swiss cheese strategy against the coronavirus. Now let's look into the detail of the fence layer. You have different options. You can go for the checkpoint, which is a very thin slice of cheese. So it's quite cheap. It's a cheap measure. And that's just testing everybody coming in. It's not going to catch everybody, but it's going to catch a few infections. And so it might be worthwhile to just do this checkpoint. A second one might be the quarantines, where you're checking people, you're testing people when they come in, you then quarantine them, and four days later you test them again, and you can do that with rapid tests. Well, that's going to be a bit more expensive because you have a quarantine that's expensive, but it's not too expensive, and it's going to catch a lot of the viruses. You can see here that in that slice of cheese, there's not a lot of holes. And then finally, you have walls, which is just not letting people in from certain countries. Well, that's going to stop a lot of infections, nearly all, but unfortunately it's very, very expensive, so countries should be very thoughtful for when they do that. The second layer of defense is social bubbles, preventing people from meeting others when they're infected. And similarly, as with fences, there's different uh, uh, levels here of defense. You have the very cheap defense, uh, which is crowd limits, right? Uh, avoid concerts, avoid things like that. 100 people, 50 people, weddings. Um, crowds are by far the biggest contributor to the uh, spread of the virus. So if you limit crowds, it's not that expensive, but it's going to stop a lot of infections. The second one is activity closures, such as uh, closing bars, clubs, schools, restaurants, shops. These are very expensive. You can see that that slice of cheese is very, very thick. So you really should be avoid avoiding it, especially because depending on the activity, it's not going to be a huge contributor. Normal shopping, for example, doesn't contribute that much in the spread of the virus. And then finally, the very thick one is lockdowns, when everybody that can should stay home. You really want to avoid that because it's extremely expensive for the economy, even if uh, it works really well and stops a lot of the infections. The third layer of defense against the coronavirus is contrafection, right? Reducing contagiousness, reducing infectiousness when people meet. The good thing about this layer of defense is that, in fact, it's made up of a lot of different layers that add up to each other. You don't need to choose between two of them. You can, in fact, have all six of these layers. You can prevent communication from happening when you meet somebody, or you can meet for a very short period of time. You can do that in the outdoors. You can wear goggles to prevent uh, infection through the eyes, masks, uh, hygiene, and each one of these things is going to reduce the coronavirus. So that's a lot of layers 
that build on each other and each one of them is quite cheap so it's worthwhile in the case of outdoors for example if you cannot do it a uh, uh, worse layer is doing it indoors but opening windows and having fans for ventilation and if you cannot do that either because of the weather well you can close the windows but increase the temperature get the right humidity and filter the air so this is the third layer of defense against the coronavirus and the fourth one is identifying cases and neutralizing them and that is test trace isolate now this layer is a bit special because it's not made up of different layers or you can choose one layer or the other no you actually need to do all four things and if you don't do all four things it just doesn't work you need to test so you can find infections you need to trace the contacts to figure out everybody else who might be infected if somebody is infected you need to isolate that person because otherwise they're going to infect other people and finally if somebody is suspected of potentially being infected you want to quarantine that person and if you test or you trace contacts but you don't isolate or quarantine it's just worthless so these are the four layers of defense against the coronavirus fences social bubbles contrafection and test trace isolate